The way we're going to enter into this new idea is to take something that we learned just now, or that you demonstrated just now, which is that we read a number like this in the index form. We read that as, and you guys actually said the phrase quite a few times. How do we read it? How do we say that? Actually, I reckon we could do it all together, right? We read that as to, to the power, that's what that thing is called, that number there, of seven, right? So seven is the power, so two to the power of seven. Yes, Ada. Uh, do we write this down? Yes, please. So it's on the board, it should be in your book. So that's great. We read two with a seven up there as two to the power of seven. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I've got a bit of a pattern happening here, right? You can probably guess I could finish off these sentences by saying we read this as two to the power of two, and we read this as 2 to the power of 3, right? And that's perfectly fine, that's accurate. But there's another kind of shorter, briefer way of saying this. Remember, mathematicians love shorter, briefer ways of doing things. So I'm going to give this to you in another way. You might have heard this phrase before. We read this not just as 2 to the power of 2, but we also read it as 2 squared. Could you raise your hand if you've heard that phrase before? Raise it. Excellent. Okay, hands down. That means, I expect a lot of you could tell me what you'd read this as. Two cubed. cubed. Very good. Okay, now this is a bit of a tricky one. I don't want you to jump in with an answer straight away, but I would love you to raise your hand if you think you've got an idea on this one. Why do we do that? Like, this pattern works fine, and like, patterns are nice when they're always the same. Why do we introduce this funny new way of saying it, apart from it being shorter? What's the meaning? Anyone want to... Be brave and have a stab. Yeah, what do you reckon? Um, because in measurement, two by two is the width and length. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's yep. All right. Good. So, in case you didn't catch that, right? The idea here is about measurement. It's about things. It's about shapes that we know. Okay. And in fact, I'd love you to draw this underneath for me. Under two squared. Uh, what is two squared, by the way? Two to the power of two is what's the actual number? Four. It's four, isn't it? So we'll write two squared equals four. And beside where you've written that. Would you draw for me, and if you have another colour, that'd be nice. Draw for me a little square. Now, if you've got a little square there, and if you have a ruler, please use that, it'll end up being a lot better. If you have a square, and each of its sides are two units long. So I would call this a square of side length two, because the sides have a length. Of two, okay. I can draw my square and divide up. There's one and there's one, which gives me two. And there's one and there's one, which gives me two. And now you can see where the four comes from, right? Four is how big the square is. It's how much space it takes up, right? So you can even count one, two, three, four. There's two square, right? It's a square with side length two. So that's where two squared comes from. Uh, in parallel to this, we can write 2 cubed, that's 2 times 2 times 2. What number is that? That's 8. eight. eight. Very good. So 2 cubed equals 8. What are we going to draw now? Instead of a square, we're going to draw a cube right beside it. Now, this is a bit trickier to draw, but what the way I do it is I start with the same square that I begin with, right? Like that. And we'll try and make this a 3D drawing, right? Because cubes are 3D shapes. So it's going to go back like this. Okay, I've done the best I can. Now, you can see, again, this is a cube, and it's a cube of side length 2, except it's got more than two sides. It's got a whole bunch of different sides. So I'm going to label them. I've got a side of length 2 going across the top. I've got a side of length 2, which is how high it is. And where's the last side that's length 2? There's a third one. Yeah. The one in the back. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the one that's kind of going into the board, yeah. right? Not, not across, not up or down, but um, I guess you could say it's kind of like back and forth. Or it's coming out of the board or going into the board, whichever way you're thinking about. Right? And you can see where the 8 comes from. Can you see? Right? If we counted up how much space our cube took up, um, the first four cubes in the front, one, two, three, four, are there, and then there's four more behind it, 
right? So I, I guess I can't really quite label them, but I can say four more dot i. And that four and four gives us the a. Okay. All right, so now that we've established that, this idea of squaring a number or cubing a number, right? This is the same thing as raising a power. Now you can see where this unusual language of square roots and cube roots comes from. G'day, Mr. Johnson. How are they going? How are they going? How are they yeah. They're wonderful. This is a really <laughs> active and interesting class. This is 7N. 7N? So, yes. Ah, very good. But do they look engaged and interested? No, they're a really sharp lot. We've been having a lot of fun. With I bet they're really good at maths, are they? Oh, well, they're just blowing me away every lesson. So, really Fantastic. I look hey, forward sir. to seeing how they continue to go. Yeah, yeah. No pressure, by the way. Don't worry. He does that every time. Okay, so we know what squaring is, we know what cubing is. This idea of roots, it kind of is the idea of like when you've got a tree and you've got roots, right? Roots are where the tree comes from. Like they start from the ground and then it goes up, right? So the idea of square roots and cube roots is where did this fall? Where did it come from? And the answer is it came from two. Well, where did this eight come from? And the answer is it came from the two. That's kind of where it started. Okay, so I'm going to introduce for you um, a little bit of new notation. Just like putting numbers up here is some new notation, it's, it's quicker, it's shorter. I'm going to give you some new notation as well. Okay, so we talk about the square root of a number. And it looks like this, it's a really strange looking sign. I'm going to talk about the square root of 4 because we know what that is, it's a square number. So I would write this unusual symbol here. Okay, let me draw it really, really huge for you so that you can see it just in case it's not clear. Yeah. It's sort of um, it sort of has a tick, it starts with a tick, and then you add a hat to it. Okay? So I call this the square root sign. Then the number you're interested in, you can't chuck it underneath. Okay? So you start with the tick, hat goes across. This is the square root sign. Now the square root of four is what side length has a square that's this big. And you actually already know the answer, right? Here's my square of 4. And the number it came from was 2, right? So the square root of 4 is 2, OK? Another way you can say it is, and I'll even write this for you, what's the number I have to square so that I get that number underneath, OK? That's a really helpful way of thinking about it. Aiden. Uh, 2. Yeah, that's exactly, like, what is the number of this square? And 2 squared will do it, right? So, this will be helpful if you um, write this question underneath, which tells you what this notation, what it kind of stands for. What's the number I have to square to get, and in this case, I've got 4, right? But you can ask for the square root of any number you like. You could ask for, say, the square root of 25. What's the number I have to square to get 25? Really? It's 5, right? Uh, what's the square root of, hmm, here's a tricky one, 121. Does anyone know what's the square root? What number I square to get 121? Yeah. 11. 11. 11 times 11, 121. You can check it on your tables, right? So that's what this is referring to. What number do I have to square to get there? I wonder if you can guess what I'll write for the next bit, right? Let's start by writing this sentence. The cube root of a number. And what we do is we borrow this same um, root symbol, right? But it's a different kind of root. It's a different kind of shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that symbol again. But to indicate it's not this thing. This is a square root, right? I put a 3 there, right? It's because it comes from this, this guy here, right? Cubed. So this is the cube root of 8, for example. That's just a, a number I pick out. This means, what's the number I have to cube to get 8, right? Which, of course, we just wrote on the board is, again, it's 2. Okay, so I would read that as, the cube root of 8 is 2. Now, cube roots are a bit harder because cube numbers are bigger, right? 
if I said, ooh, the cube root of 8, that's nice and small, but the, uh, the cube root of, uh, let's see, 343 doesn't come to your mind so quickly. It's 7, by the way. Okay? So you might not know these as quickly. It's all right, I just spend a lot of time thinking about them. 